Thanks for joining us. So, you know, in a million years, I don't think any of the speakers thought they would be here giving a presentation on managing cash flow in a pandemic. Uh, there, there's no training for this. No school can really prepare you for this. And, and many of these are life lessons. Uh, we're fortunate in that we have compiled uh, three CFOs from uh, very large fashion companies that have had to deal with this issue. So I'd like to introduce the CFOs before we jump into the subject matter. So first we have Eduardo Perez. Eduardo was really responsible for organizing this as a graduate of Rutgers himself. He was the one that sort of brought all the people to the board to some extent and uh, pushed for this conference. So Eduardo is the CFO at uh, St. Laurent. Uh, prior to that, he was the CFO at Lacoste North America. Uh, and as I said, he is a graduate from Rutgers. Next, we have uh, Donatella Bourignon. Uh, Donatella uh, is the global CFO at Alexander Wang. Uh, and her responsibilities include, you know, really every territory uh, dealing where, wherever Alexander Wang has product and the like and managing uh, the uh, finances for those those. Uh, territories. But prior to that, she was CFO at Diesel, and uh, Donatella is Italian and speaks probably more languages than anybody else up here on the, uh, the panel right now, <laughs> between French, uh, German, Italian, and English. And then our last speaker is Rich Naren Ho, uh, who is the uh, U.S. Uh, or America's uh, uh, CFO for Caring. Caring, as you may know, is one of the largest um, fashion companies in the world. They own uh, Gucci, Balenciaga, uh, Saint Laurent, and Rich handles uh, the financial uh, matters for the U.S., Brazil, Mexico, Latin America, and the like. Um, so let, let, let's jump into uh, this discussion. I mean, as I opened with, there, there's really no lesson that you could teach on this ahead of time, but now that you guys have been through this, I guess my first question is, what would be the one thing you've learned from this? Uh, uh, Eduardo, we'll start with you. Uh, thank you, Tony. Um, well, I, um, I love sports. Personally, I love sports. So I always enjoy the idea of using sports analogies uh, to link um, you know, life, sports with life or sports with inspiration. And so, you know, uh, I guess when I think about the last six months, um, I, I was reminded of a quote um, that someone gave me from a, a Hall of Fame coach for the UCLA Bruins, John Wooden. And uh, he said something along the lines that hardship brings people closer together if you share it. And those words for me resonate a lot uh, in the last six months. Um, you know, uh, because when I think about it, uh, whether it's internally, the lens internally uh, via our organization, uh, or externally with our vendors and partners, um, the lesson that sticks out for me is, is the success we attained when we all shared the burden and the losses, the real losses of this unprecedented moment. And we all worked together to ensure the viability of our businesses, of our teams, um, and really all of our stakeholders. So, um, you know, I just recall clearly just, you know, uh, seeing throughout this process when when we're able to move away from that kind of transactional mentality, right, and put a more humane lens to, to every decision we're making, every negotiation we're having, uh, or every risk we're taking in the middle of it, uh, you know, we were able to find a way to work together and find solutions. So uh, I feel like that, that sharing component is one of the biggest lessons I've learned and really the relational equity that, that requires for that to work. Great. Donatella. I agree with Eduardo for sure. Uh, this, uh, uh, before being a financial crisis, was also a, a human crisis. And uh, we all have uh, families or friends that lost their life, also among the, our employees or our vendors. Uh, and for sure, it was a moment that uh, uh, you kind of change your business approach in uh, the way you, really, you make decisions. And uh, you really have to uh, uh, be 
intellectually honest and very humble when you talk to your vendors, you talk to your customers, and also to your employees and your colleagues, and come to the table finding a common solution, a middle ground, making sure that basically both parties are coming out in winning and making sure the end decision was sustainable because uh, it was for sure a situation where you had to share the pain. Uh, it was no business as usual. Right. And Rich, I think you coined the phrase when we were talking about this, that you know, you, uh, the companies had to be agile. And in order to survive this, they had to be nimble and agile. Uh, what was the lesson that you, you learned, Rich? Well, in terms of, uh, I would say there were two major lessons uh, from, from our side. Number one is, um, you really learn who you are because we had to prioritize a lot in terms of, uh, of what we wanted to, uh, you know, when cash became tight. Um, and uh, so you really learn what's, what's, what's important to you because what's important to you is going to go to the top of your priority. So, uh, so that's, that's something that, that we learned. Um, and, and we put, as an example at Caring, we put our people uh, before everything. Um, so I thought that was a, that was a terrific lesson from, from our side. Um, and, and second, you know, going back to Eduardo's, sports theme, um, I would say that, um, you know, managing cash is, is, is almost like, like fitness. You, you know, you, you have to train for, for a marathon. You can't just jump in a marathon and get it done. You have to continuously do it. So from, from our side, uh, we learned that we needed to get better at that than what we were. We needed to train harder um, because we, we came up uh, across a, a really um, tough and uphill marathon. So, um, so we learned that we need to basically uh, train harder. You know, and, and you, you, prioritizing is the key for this. So the, the, the title of this, to some extent, is managing uh, cash, um, prioritizing, delaying, canceling, and shuffling, because you're going to have to do all these things in order to really address this pandemic. So let, let's start with supply chain. Supply chain seems to be one of the most expensive uh, uses of cash to some extent when you're, you're managing cash, which we'll stay with you for a second. What were some of the things you did on the supply chain to, to manage the flow? On supply chain, um, from, from our side, we're, we're very fortunate that, uh, you know, we, we are the parent company. Um, and as a result, we're, we basically, um, uh, we basically have intercompany inter relationships with our, with our brands. So we have a bit more flexibility. We are our own largest vendor. Um, so we have a little bit of leeway from, from our side there. Um, so we were able to quickly mitigate the slow down the payments, uh, the intercompany payments to free up cash um, so that we could focus on, uh, on those less forgiving third party vendors. So that was the, the very first thing that we did. And then, um, and then we started to prioritize based on, again, what was important to us. Um, what, what, what were those things, as, as you said before, what could you cancel? Um, what could you reshuffle? Uh, what could you renegotiate? Uh, and my colleague and, uh, and good friend Eduardo Perez is probably one of the best at that uh, when he negotiated uh, a lot of like, solid rent deals. Um, so th those were those were the, the ones that we focused on. Donatella, yeah. okay, Eduardo. I was just going to chime in and say, you know, that um, you know when it comes to supply chain, and and uh, I think Donatella and I were having a conversation about it not too long ago, um, and I'm sure she'll share. One of the biggest decisions we all had to make was what do we do with uh, you know our number one working capital factory, which is uh, inventory, you know, in production. And so, you know, at the time when the, the pandemic was just kind of, uh, you know, coming to light, I think everyone was starting to uh, try to look at what's happening first in the region of China and then in Europe and then how it trickled the U.S. and what do we do at every single one of those stages. And I think we had to make the decision that I think most of us uh, did, which was do we cancel production? Do we stop production? Those kind of decisions. And um, uh, luckily at the time, uh, you know, we still had a window uh, to be able to, to cancel production if that was the decision that we wanted to take. And we did. Uh, we did because at the time we were able to take a look at what was happening, understand, uh, you know, the impact happening uh, around the world and in this region and know that uh, you know, the, the demand for the product was not going to be the same in the next you know, six to 12 months and, and varying across regions. So from a supply chain or production standpoint, we had to make that difficult decision, uh, understanding uh, or not knowing you know, truly if it was 100% the correct one or not, uh, really anticipating. 
Uh, and I'll let Donatella kind of share a little bit about that as well. For sure, the inventory is the biggest. Uh, it was the main focus in terms of action to uh, save cash, to preserve cash. And uh, uh, knowing that the uh, pandemic uh, hit really uh, North America and Europe after US, at that point, you already had uh, launched the production for the fall winter, which of course being cycle, uh, being seasonal, uh, that one was really launched. And uh, it was really a very quick decision. Uh, and the team, the management team uh, did really an excellent job uh, in uh, uh, getting together and overnight uh, estimated what was the right amount of uh, uh, production to cancel, which of course you don't want to uh, impact negatively the business. And this is a moment where you take decision not having much visibility, uh, no historical data for sure, because this was unprecedented. Uh, and uh, uh, working with the merchandising team uh, to uh, change the merchandising plan uh, and uh, decide which size to cancel, uh, and then work with your wholesale customers and your uh, retailers and your stores and understand what can be really maintained, what can be postponed in uh, to a later season so that you maintain and you can utilize the raw material because you cannot just cancel production uh, 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 because at that point you already have a raw material liability committed. So that was for sure a very intense uh, period of a quick decision with no much data and uh, it require a cohesive team, a management team uh, and also strong processes which allowed us to uh, take the right decision and succeed at the end of the day. We always had in mind for sure that uh, it was better to be in a situation where you are out of stock rather than have uh, an uh, excessive inventory because there was not really the time to uh, carry this liability. You really, and uh, so well, that was really the direction we took uh, and uh, it was, um, thanks God, a good decision. You, you guys also talked about, and, sorry, trying to talk. Yeah, and I wanted to add in parallel to this, uh, there was uh, the pure supply chain in parallel to this, having uh, an uh, international business, a global business, uh, uh, as Europe was uh, uh, going lockdown, uh, immediately followed by North America, Asia was uh, reopening, especially China, and starting uh, consuming, and the demand started really shifting in terms of region. So we had really proactively and uh, work with our warehouses and move inventory around, reshuffling really inventory around uh, from one region to another and from one channel to another because we all experienced the uh, online the e-commerce uh, growing double digits, sometimes triple digits very, very quickly. And uh, for sure, you had to prioritize uh, where do you put uh, the inventory you're producing, in which region and which channel. Uh, that was also something that uh, uh, never experienced before, but had to happen in order to succeed and go through this turbulent time. That's yeah. exactly what I'm going to ask you, Rich, next, which is from moving the inventory. That, 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 and, and Eduardo, please jump in as well. Moving the inventory was a whole challenge in itself because you had to move it from some stores that were open to some stores that you know were, that were no longer open to, to different channels and the like. What did you learn in that? Um, how resilient uh, our, our our logistics team is, um, and and again, we didn't sh just shuffle uh, across countries. We also shuffled across cities uh, because uh, we were basically shuffling closings of, of cities. So uh, you, you really needed to. To have that, uh, that, and if we go back to partnerships, I heard somebody uh, mention relationships and partnerships, that you have to have strong partners there in terms of uh, from a logistics, logistics team, both internal and external. So um, yeah, it was, uh, it, it, was, it was very challenging. Yeah, from an from a inventory perspective, I agree that, you know, once we're able to kind of make a decision and deal with producing new stock, then the next question was, what do we do with existing stock? Exactly. And, uh, and, and for us, it was key uh, really just, you know, trying to find a, a way to optimize the existing stock by reallocating to different regions, kind of like to what Donatella alluded to, um, you know, and it was really working with all the worldwide teams uh, to really understand where they are in the curve, where, who's open, who needs what stock, who has what, and, and how to work together uh, to really move the stock around uh, to really minimize the impact of potentially having obsolete stock there down, down the road. So that was critical. That was key. Uh, you know, and uh, it really was important for all the different regional, uh, you know, supply chain and logistics teams to work together uh, along with the local team. So that was, that was very important in terms of really, you know, what I would say is, is focusing on the total uh, inventory situation from a cash flow perspective.